Let's see how quickly we can cover the required practicals for Edexcel Pearson GCSE Biology. First, some tips that you should always keep in mind when answering a question on a practical in your exams. Remember that in many of these investigations, there's an independent variable, the thing you change, a dependent variable, the other thing that changes as a result, which you measure and controls. Variables that could change, but we keep them the same throughout in order to ensure that results are accurate. Always say what piece of equipment you use for each measurement. Don't just say measure the length of the object. Also add with a ruler or whatever you're using. That's a mark in itself. When it comes to safety, we always use goggles and often gloves when working with chemicals. State the flipping obvious. If you think, surely they don't want me to put that, put it down anyway. You never know what marks you might pick up. Talk about the accuracy of measurements. How will you reduce errors and uncertainties? For example, you get your eye in line with the measurement when using a ruler or measuring cylinder to reduce parallax error. Another classic thing you should put down is multiple or repeat measurements or readings to calculate a mean from. Finally, it's okay to write your answers in bullet point format. In fact, I recommend it as it helps you and the examiner keep track of how many different points are being made. Because I'm trying to fit loads in here, you might see me write abbreviated points for the sake of brevity, but when you write a point, do it in full. Make sure you use proper English. Don't start going all Tarzan like saying, heat liquid with fire. More like heat the water gently on a gauze on a tripod over a Bunsen burner flame. Also, don't forget that you can see me and others from Malmesbury Science doing these practicals for realsies on Malmesbury Education. Link is in the description. Let's go. Biology 1, cells and microscopes. Usually you'll get a thin layer of onion skin using a scalpel and tweezers. Place it on the microscope slide. Add a drop of iodine to stain the cells so they're more visible and place a cover slip on top. Place the slide on the stage. Turn the microscope's light on or if it's a mirror, instead tilt it so it reflects up the condenser to the slide. And make sure you start with the shortest subjective lens, the smallest magnification. Use the coarse focus knob, then the fine focus knob to move the stage until the specimen is in focus. Then change to a higher magnification objective lens and refocus if needed. You could have a tiny graticule, a tiny ruler that sits on the slide as well, that lets you measure the size of cells in micrometers. Micro is times 10 to the minus 6 in standard form, so a cell length of 2.5 micrometers is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Biology 2, enzymes. The aim is to determine the optimum temperature or pH for an enzyme, usually done with the enzyme amylase and substrate starch, but it could be something else instead. The independent variable is either temperature or pH, which we change using a water bath or buffer solutions respectively. The dependent variable is the time taken for all of the starch, the substrate to be broken down. Measure out a set volume of the amylase and starch solutions using a syringe or measuring cylinder, then mix together and start your timer. Every 10 seconds, remove a bit of the mixture and put a drop in the spotting tile dimple that has iodine in. It will turn black initially, showing there's still starch present. It hasn't been completely broken down yet. Repeat this every 10 seconds until there is no colour change at all. That's the end point. Record this time. Repeat these steps using different temperatures thanks to the water bath and measure the temperature with thermometer, in the test tube itself of course, or we change to a different pH buffer solution. Plot the time for each against temperature or pH and draw a line of best fit, which will be a curve. We say the optimum temperature or pH is between the two lowest points. Biology 3. Food tests. Finding out what nutrients are in different foods. For solid food, we grind using a pestle and water, then add distilled water to create a solution. We've already seen the test for starch. We just add iodine solution. If it turns black or a dark purple, there is starch present. To test for glucose and simple sugars, we add Benedict solution and heat using a water bath. It's a semi-quantitative test, as the colour can go from blue to green, yellow to orange, depending on how much sugar is in the food. Birouette's reagent will turn from blue to purple in the presence of protein. To test for fats, that's lipids, we add cold ethanol and leave it for a minute, then add this to a test tube of water. If the solution goes cloudy, that's a positive test for lipids. Biology 4. Osmosis. The aim is to find the concentration of sugar in potato cells, but it could be another veggie instead. Cut equal size cylinders from the same vegetable using a corer, chop off the end so there's no non-permeable skin left, dab the excess water off the surface, weigh using a top and balance, then place in test tubes filled with different concentrations of sugar solution. This is our independent variable. After a set time, say a day, we remove them, dab off the excess water again and re-weigh. Calculate the percentage difference in mass for each cylinder. This is our dependent variable. Some will have a positive change, some negative. Plot these against solution concentration and you should get a straight line. Where the line of best fit meets the x-axis is the concentration at which no osmosis occurs. No water moves in or out of the cells, so that must be the same as the concentration of glucose in the tater cells themselves. 
Biology 5, Microbiology or Microbial Cultures. We can either put spots of different bacteria cultures on agar in a petri dish and observe how they grow over time, or spread a culture all over the agar to make a lawn on which we can put drops of antibiotics or paper discs soaked in them. We use aseptic technique, that is, every piece of equipment must be sterile. We can ensure this by putting the glass pipette, spreader or rod, etc. through a Bunsen flame before using. We also open the dish just a little bit to work on it and also towards the Bunsen flame. The heat will kill microbes, and also the updraft from the flame will stop microbes from moving into the dish. We only put a couple of bits of tape on the dish to secure the lid as we want air to get in to allow aerobic respiration in the bacteria. If it's anaerobic, some real nasty stuff could be made instead. We then leave them incubate for a number of days. Then we measure the diameters of the colonies on the agar using a ruler or the areas in which there are no bacteria if we used antibiotics. We then calculate the areas using pi r squared or pi d squared over 4 and compare them. Biology 6. Photosynthesis. The aim is to determine the relationship between light intensity and rate of photosynthesis. Technically, the independent variable is the distance of the plant from the light source. The dependent variable is either the volume of gas made in a certain time or the number of bubbles released, say, in a minute. We use pond weed that's submerged in water in an inverted test tube or measuring cylinder. Once it's in there, we want to get our little scissors and cut the stem at an angle and add sodium hydrogen carbonate in the water to promote oxygen release. And of course, we want to do this in a dark room. We measure the distance between the light source and pondweed using a meter rule, turn on the light and wait, say, a minute for the pondweed to acclimatise, for the photosynthesis to reach a constant rate. Then we start counting bubbles or we measure the volume of oxygen made. We repeat this at different distances, then plot bubbles or volume of oxygen made against distance. You should end up with a curve that looks something like this. This is because light intensity follows an inverse square relationship with distance. That is, if you double the distance, the light intensity quarters and therefore the rate of photosynthesis should too. Biology 7, respiration. We use a respirometer to measure the rate at which oxygen is absorbed by germinating peas. The tube has a small opening at the end to allow the pressure to equilibrate. A drop of food colouring is inserted in the end, which will move down the tube as the pressure decreases inside. Alternatively, the tubes could be submerged in water. Either way, the liquid will move down the graduated tube due to oxygen being absorbed by the peas and the carbon dioxide produced being absorbed into the soda lime. You can also use cotton wool dipped in potassium hydroxide solution. It's best to put these in a water bath at 25 degrees C for say 30 minutes as this is the optimum temperature for respiration to take place in the peas. You can then compare the end result against two other respirometers under the same conditions, one with boiled peas in and another with just glass beads in as a control. Biology 8, field work and using quadrats. We can use a quadrat to help us estimate the population of an organism in an area. Use a random number generator to choose grid positions in your area to place the one meter squared quadrat over and count the number of the chosen organism inside each. You should aim to sample 10% of the total area to give an accurate estimate. Calculate the mean number per meter squared, then multiply this by the total area in meter squared to give an estimate for the total population. You can also combine the quadrant with a transect, a line to see how the population density varies with distance in a certain direction, say along a beach, moving the quadrat up the transect one metre at a time. You can plot population density against distance, then this could also be a kite graph. Don't forget the factors that affect population density caused by other living things are biotic factors, say predators. If it's a non-biological factor, say the surface that the organism is on, this is an abiotic factor. Leave a like and a comment if you found this helpful. Click on the cards to go to the Marsbury Science playlist or the other card to go to the videos covering whole papers. See you next time.